So if you're like me, you're not 100% surprised or taken aback that Russell Brown Brand finally found Jesus. But maybe it was kind of shocking when it happened. It was a surprise to me. But it's so awesome, I can't even stand it. The reason I say I'm not very surprised that it happens is that I think old Russ really embodies a few of the key contrasts of Christianity and other religions, which is that hypocrisy is not tolerated and that truth matters. And the backlash against his baptism is so telling. There are so many haters out there when celebrities are announcing faith in Christ and they're becoming members of the church. I'm not sure what denomination or background Russell Brand is part of, but he definitely knows Jesus is the answer. The one thing I wasn't expecting was a comment from his video announcing his baptism to really get me spun up. The comment was just, just remember Christianity isn't a religion, it's a relationship with Christ. So I wanted to go through how that idea has been ruining Christianity and actually making people run from the faith. In fact, I'd say that Jesus gave us commands that pretty much all look like religion. So if you say you love Jesus, then you'll follow his commands, right? That's in John 14, 15. He commands us to do a lot of stuff, but it's also all conveniently boiled down to love God first with all your being in life and to love your neighbor as yourself. When asked the greatest commandment, that's what Jesus responds with. So how do we know how to love God? How do we know how to define love? Well, that's easy too. God gave us his word, Jesus, the fulfillment of the scriptures, and then the rest of the Bible. This relationship with Jesus stuff has really run its course. In fact, the soft theology, I don't need the church and I don't need to read the Bible garbage, is just plain heretical. Jesus came to die for the church to reconcile the world. Jesus came to purify his bride to reclaim his vineyard. John, the guy who wrote the love gospel, also wrote in 1 John, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. John then goes on to say what it means that it's a new commandment, right? So then he gets into what Jesus did to change the game, that Jesus came and changed the game, and that we do not have to be beholden to that sin anymore. Jesus' death and resurrection changed everything except the law. I think it's hilarious that the same people who say the Trinity isn't in the Bible and that homosexuality isn't a sin also want to reduce Christianity, Christianity down to a relationship with Jesus. In fact, demons expressed faith in Christ before the disciples did. Having a relationship with someone is important, but not as important as the relationship you have with them. If you have a relationship with a friend and then all of a sudden he does something crazy like burn your house down, you still have a relationship with him. It's just not a very good one, right? In the same way, if we're in a relationship with Jesus, but we ignore what he told us to do, we're living a lie. We're living in the lie of our false hope. We're continuing on in our prideful sin. People that listen to Russell Brand are people who are tired of legacy media, big pharma, and military industrial complex. And what did people's individual relationships with Christ do to stop the wave of overreach and tyranny that happened during COVID? Nothing. Most believers folded like a cheap suit, went along with all the madness. Obviously, that included many churches. All those churches were saying, it's okay to go along with a secular worldview on this. Just never give up your relationship with Jesus. Stay focused on the gospel. Except they did. Many abandoned the principles Jesus taught. They abandoned biblical principles. They offered the pinch of incense. And a gospel divorced from her everyday life is a false gospel. I would bet that part of what Russell Brand saw in Christ was a lordship over everything, truth worth worshiping and love worth worshiping, not just a friend, a savior. Christ is Lord of all. Christ is the answer. And our sin is that problem. We don't need a buddy Jesus figure like they roll out in that old 90s movie like Dogma. In fact, I think that's why people are turning to the Catholic Church, Orthodox Church, and Reformed Protestant churches and running from Big Eva and mainstream churches that don't have enough backbone to stand against the injustice and madness they see all around them. The churches that stayed open during COVID, the pastors that speak against the madness and goofiness all around us are growing. The winsome, weak sauce gospel churches that leave out the whole you're a sinner part or the God is wrathful part 
that false gospel doesn't change anything. It's more of the same therapeutic, self-centered garbage that got us here in the first place. No one wants that squishy, ineffectual faith that's about affirming people anymore. Why? Because it's madness and directly contradictory to how God commands us to live. No one wants to attend a church that's taking a nuanced approach to abortion or mutilating children. That's worshiping in the courtyard of Moloch, not worshiping the living triune God of the Bible. Jesus commands us to be salt and light, to follow God's commands, not hypocritically, but in all areas of our lives. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. He calls us to build up true communities and true fellowship with God who are willing to stand and pray to God the Father when society tells them to bow to secular culture and democracy. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Jesus commands us to not give in to lust. Who knew that would be so countercultural? Matthew 5, 27 through 30. Not get divorced. Matthew 5, 31 and 32. And I haven't even gotten to the other gospels. The fact is, culturally and nationally, we need repentance. Christians, we need to lead the way in that repentance, not wait for the heathen nations to stop vainly raging. We need to take responsibility for our nation and our churches and repent. Jesus tells us how to have a relationship with him, and he came to put us in right relationship with God the Father in truth. So let's drop all the mamby-pamby relationship stuff and live like we believe God is in heaven, that we are all sinners, and that we believe that Christ is Lord of all.